Hey everyone, Leanne here from Kingdom Bloggers. So I'm continuing on with my series about repurposing content. Today I'm going to show you how to take a free Bible reading plan. So this is those monthly topical reading plans. Many of you use them as lead magnets to build your email list, and maybe you've just created them to provide to your audience. But I'm going to show you how to take that one free item and turn it into multiple pieces of content. So, you know, I'm all about creating content with the purpose of repurposing it. That way it saves time, energy, and actually a lot of brain space, because now you're not having to think about what can I create? Just take something that you've already made and figure out ways to turn it into more content. So I'm going to show you here. This is sort of an outline and this uh, PDF will be linked in the notes below so you can print it out and follow it along. And so I'm going to go over it and I'm going to show you what each of these looks like. So here is the blueprint. So you've created a list of 12 uh, monthly topical reading plan ideas. So, you know, if you may already have these ideas yourself or just go to chat GPT and ask it to create you a list of 12 content topics. And these are things that just, you know, people struggle with, you know, it could be confidence. It could be grace. It could be more detailed, like modern idols or something like that. So for this example, once we hop over to mine, we're actually going to use my modern idols study as an example. So here's the different pieces that you will end up creating. And then I'm going to show you how to piece them all together. So first, you're going to create a list of daily scriptures for that top. So this is going to be, you know, depending on the month, I typically will create 31 um, and, and do every one of them for 30 or 31, just so they're relevant any month of the year, because, you know, February is missing a couple of days, but you can do it however you want. Then you're going to create a list of three questions for each of those verses. Now, a lot of times with studies, every um, lesson has the same questions. It's like, what does this verse tell you about God's character? We want more detailed questions to help people really get more out of that specific verse. So what I like to do is one study, one reflection, and one kind of practical or modern application for that particular verse. So you're going to create a list of those three questions for every single verse on your reading plan. Then you're going to create just some blank worksheets. This could be like a Bible study notes worksheet. It could be a soap worksheet, a verse mapping worksheet, or it could be a combination of all of them, uh, prayer requests, things like that. Just some extra blank sheets that you'll be able to include in every single one of your plans. Then you're going to create a list of five reflection and five practical application questions for the topic. Now, those other questions were specifically to the verse of the day. This is going to be for the topic as a whole. Next, you're going to create a list type post, uh, blog post for the topic. So again, using the modern idols example, it could be like, you know, 10, uh, idols of modern society and how we avoid them. And so the list is the, the 10 idols that we're going to talk about. This is what I call like your roundup post. And we'll dive into that in just a minute. So you've got the list post, then you're going to create a devotional style blog post for each of the things on the list. Then you're going to create a YouTube video for each of the blog posts. So the first one, the list type post, and then for each of the individual ones. So however many blog posts you have, you should have that same number of videos. Now, the video part is, of course, if you're focusing on building your YouTube channel, you don't have to include this, but this is a great way to build both platforms at the same time without wondering what should I be talking about. And be, by the way, these videos don't have to be 45 minutes long. They could literally just be devotional in nature, like five or six minutes. Or of course, you could dive deeper and make them longer if you wanted to. And the final thing, you're going to create a study landing page. So this will be on a page, not a post. And this is where you're going to end up linking all these materials. So this is kind of going to be the last part that you create. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so moving down here, these are the things we're going to create from those other things. So you're going to have your freebie, which is the actual reading plan. And here's some things that you can include on it. You're going to create a premium upsell version of it. That's going to add some additional components. And those are listed here. And then you're going to create an actually a third product. Now, these are all meant for Gumroad. Now you can sell the, the premium ones on Etsy as well. And you should, 
but these are specifically for Gumroad, and I'll explain why later on. So you have the free Bible reading plan, which is 30 scriptures, one for each day of the month, and then you have the premium upsell version. Now you're also going to create a devotional study, and all the stuff that we created above, all of this stuff up here is going to be included in this. So this is not a monthly plan where it's a verse of the day to read. This is an actual Bible study lesson, kind of in a devotional kind of way. And then there's some other things you're going to create here uh, for each month, create a single page for that month. You know, your January Bible reading plan, you will actually have a dedicated page on your website where that, that reading plan will be on it along with some other content. Don't worry. I'm going to show you what that looks like. And that link is going to go to your Gumroad page. And then you're going to create two more pages. One is going to be uh, the best topical reading plans for the whole year or 12 monthly reading plan. I mean, you could really call it whatever you want, but this is a page that's going to link to each of the single pages. Okay. And then you're going to create a second page with a similar but different title, but instead of it linking to the actual pages that you created, these will link to the free Gumroad uh, product. And then some other things, these are things just to make sure you do. So you can read through all of this um, when you print those out. Okay, so now let's hop over to what does everything look like? Okay, so this is the actual scripture reading plan that you're probably familiar with. Uh, side note, you wanna make like, a couple of different versions of it. So you see, I have four different layouts. The reason for this is you can upload this directly into Pinterest in addition to the blog post pins that you create. These will actually get a much higher uh, conversion, meaning people click on them and want to download it because when they click on it, they have to go to your website to actually download it. And so it's going to be a great way to get more sessions to your website. So I make multiples. So you see here, there's four of them. And this way I can kind of schedule them out, uh, you know, one a week when I first publish them. And I do them the month prior to the month in question. This way they're in the rotation, but there's different aesthetics to it. Now, mine are themed to the color of the study for that month. You can put different graphic designs on them. Like this is this purple blue thing. You can put different ones if you want. Um, for me, it's more about the layout design. So you can see they're all different. Okay. So the next thing, so this, when they get, let me go to the free. So this is the Gumroad listing. Now, if you don't know, Gumroad lets you upload free products. I will link a video in the notes for how to do all that. I am a huge fan of this because people can actually offer you a tip for them. And so it's a really great way to make a few bucks on the free things that you're creating. And there's an upsell funnel built right into it. And so you don't need fancy software like lead magnets or anything like that to create upsells. So this is the freebie. They get the scripture writing, the, the or I'm sorry, the reading plan. Here's one of those blank worksheets. The prayer request is why you want to have them because each month you'll just, you keep the, the actual worksheet and just add the graphic element to match the theme for that month. And then those five and five, the five reflection and five practical application questions, that's what goes in the freebie. And so this is what they get. Now, the upsell is going to be a little bit more stuff. And all of those things are listed. You can really add whatever you want in it. Um, actually, here on this, there's an example of what that looks like. Let me see if I can zoom in here. So the, the premium is the list of verses. You add those three daily questions. So one, you know, whatever the day's verses, there's three questions for that day. Um, you can add some other things uh, and all that's listed here. I mean, really, these are just what I add. You can really add all kinds of extra stuff if you want it. I have practical application, lessons learned, some other materials, coloring pages, things like that. I also offer a digital iPad version. So the free one just gives them the verses and a few blank worksheets. This one gives them a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, before I dive into this one, I want to talk about how, how are these two products driving traffic to my website? So let's talk about that. Okay, so let's go back to the blueprint. So we created the list of scriptures for the topic, the three daily questions, the blank worksheets, the five and five questions. Now we're going to create... And before you start packaging this stuff together, I, I recommend that you create all this stuff first because then it makes it easier to just put it together. So now we're going to do the list type post 
for the topic. So my example is called from, so the monthly topic for this is modern idol. So my example is um, from celebrities to tech, the new age of idol worship. And in this, it's a regular blog post, but it's written more in a devotional nature. So, you know, with practical application kind of stuff. So here I have modern idols. So now I just have a short bit about some different idols. I think there's 10 of them listed in here, right? And then you're going to go create a blog post for each of these. So for money, for success, for fame, and for all the things in between. And once you've created those individual ones, you will come back here and I'm just going to show you when money becomes our main focus. And I am going to link this one. So we're going to go. The idol of money, right? And so now each of these in the list will eventually, this is why I call it a roundup, a link to a cornerstone, whatever you want to call it. You create this one and then you go create the actual individual list items, create a post for them and then come back and link to it from this one. Okay. And so again, this is just each of the, the ones I'm going to talk about. So that is the list type post, ideally 10, but if you only have five, it's okay. So when you're thinking of your topics, for your monthly plans, make sure there are topics that you could create a list from. Um, it might be a little harder to do a monthly plan on confidence to say, you know, five areas that God gives you confidence or something like that. You want them to easily be listable. And so like in this one, we're talking about modern idols. So what are modern idols? I have another one called don't give the enemy a foothold. And so for that one, it is, I think, 10 areas in which the enemy can get a foothold in our lives, like the areas of our lives that often have cracks. And then I go in and dive into each one. And so think of it in that context when you're creating the actual ideas for each month. So you can easily go back and make a list. And again, I just go with 10 just so I have lots of content, but it could be five. It could be, you know, a lesser number. Just the idea is that whatever the topic is, you can go in and dive deeper into the, the list items that you have. You have to have list items for one, but then you dive deeper. So you create the Devo style blog post for each item on the list. For the individual post, this is a different link post, a different list item post. Um, when I call them devotional blog posts, you're basically, you're breaking it down. You're explaining the, the problem, talking about what scripture says, how to apply it. And when I think of devotional, I'm thinking, or a lesson, I'm thinking questions, right? Because every devotional has questions, like at the end, like reflection questions. So I always actually add three to five questions under a section called reflection at the very end of the blog post. So this one was about the idol of success. And so it's a really great article. Now we talked about the video. So that was the next one. So we created the list post itself. We created the list item posts. So however many they are, then you create a YouTube video for each of those blog posts, each of those devotionals. Now the video should not be a repeat of what's in the blog post. You want to approach it from a different topic. And also the video is more conversational, whereas the blog post is a little more kind of formatted. And then you'll go back and embed the videos in each of the the relevant blog post. So this is my video for the success post. So this is how you're building your website traffic and your blog at the same time on the same content topic. You're not like having to create a whole new list of topics to build your YouTube channel, just do them at the same time. And again, these videos don't have to be long. Most of mine are anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Some of them are a little bit longer. Um, but they're, they're just quick devotional pieces that somebody could listen to on the drive to work, okay? And it's literally just me reading scripture and I just talk about it in more of a conversational kind of way. Don't overthink this, okay? All right, so we've got the list post. We've got the specific items on the list. We've got posts for them. Then we've created the video for each of those pieces of content. Now we're gonna create a landing page 
for everything. So what does that look like? So this is on a page, not a blog post. And this is just how we do. I mean, you could put it on a blog post, but these show up in your blog feed. And I was adding to this along the way. So it was already published as I was adding some of the future weeks to it. So it's like, hey, welcome to the study. You know, this is where you put a link to if you have a Facebook study group or any other things you want. It says, you know, go down here. I have a table of contents. So each of these goes to the weekly lessons. And this is going to be the foundation for that devotional uh, item in Gumroad that we talked about. So you had the freebie, the premium, and the devotional. This is that. And so this is the last thing you'll create. And so we go into what is an idol? There's some video. Here's week one. We talked about the history. This actually gave me three extra pieces of content because I kind of went into the three uh, idol discussions, the golden calf, King Solomon, and the prophets of Baal. And so I created a video, a Devo, and then study notes. So let me show you. Let's go to week one. So the video, you've already seen that. That's in the actual blog post. The devotional for this week is that, remember you created the list post and then you went and created a blog post for each thing on the list. So this is the devotional. It's another blog post about, you know, that week's topic. So it's the allure of technology and you go down. And then the one thing I do because I have, um, I have ads and stuff on my site. And plus, if you have images and things like that, it can make it kind of difficult for them to read them on your blog. Now, let me sidestep. Why am I putting the material on my website instead of just giving them the direct download? Well, the goal here is building traffic. It's building sessions back to your website. Because if you're wanting to monetize with ad revenue, getting to that, you know, I think it's 10K for journey, um, 25K for She Media and 50K sessions for Mediavine, you need sessions. That's what the focus is. So if I just give them a direct download of the PDF, they'd have no reason to go over to my website. Now, although they're coming to this page, once you are monetized, one strategy of increasing the revenue is getting them to spend more time on your site, clicking through to other pages. And so this is how I accomplish that. So they have the video that goes to the YouTube video. This goes to the devotional. And then they also have the questions that they can download. This is just sort of a devotional summary. And here's the scriptures for the week, three study or five study questions, reflection and practical application. And so these are just some extra things that you can create. And then I also in each blog post at the very end of the devotional, there is a link that they can download a, a PDF version of what they just read along with the questions. So again, I need them to visit this page so I get credit for the sessions. But if they want to print it out, and put it in their study binder at the very end of the page, it's a, it says download a printable version of this devotional. And that way there's no ads. It's just text on a white background. And so that has been very helpful because a lot of people are asking for that. And then here, so these are, again, there's just like a little intro to what this topic is, but here's the material. So the actual lesson for the study is the YouTube video, the devotional blog post, and the questions that I've already created. And then we put that together in a third product for Gumroad. Now, I personally offer this for free. You can charge for this. You may think, well, I put so much effort in creating all this. I want to sell it. And that's great. I mean, you can totally do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I personally prefer to keep them free for two reasons. Number one, I want to create, I feel called to create a lot of free resources. I mean, that's just what I feel called to do. But from a business standpoint, again, when your goals are getting traffic, building uh, your traffic sessions for your website so you can get, you know, Mediavine is the ultimate. Like you could get into Journey and some of the other ones, but you really start earning income once you hit 50,000 monthly sessions. And so getting into Mediavine is like the thing everybody wants. So by giving it for free and putting it out there for all to see, I increase the amount of sessions opportunity than if I sold it, because then only the people who are willing to give me a few dollars for it are going to get it and start clicking those links. And remember this devotional, this particular product has everything. So, you know, if it was a list post with 10 different 
lit links, that's 11 URLs. So the main list post plus the individual link post plus uh, 11 videos. So however many people can access this, you're going to get sessions building for all those things. So for YouTube, it's 4,000 public watch hours. So you need people viewing. And if your YouTube channel isn't quite yet getting the organic traffic through YouTube, this is a great way to get people to those videos by offering it in a Bible study lesson kind of way, packaging up on Gumroad, offering it for free, and then, you know, putting it all out there as many different places as you can. And so let me talk about that. So the things down here, I mentioned, so the freebie, the premium, the Devo. Okay, so let me break down all the URLs. So for this example, we had the initial link post that, you know, uh, from Celebrity to Tech Worship. And then we had the 10 blog posts that are linked in that. So that's 11 URLs. Then we have the YouTube video. So that's 11 YouTube video URLs. Then you have the freebie on Gumroad. So that's an actual URL as well. And the premium and then the Devo, each of those are URLs. And those I'm referring to for creating pins for Pinterest. But back to your website and creating additional sessions. Okay, so in addition to the individual blog posts that you created, the list posts and the link tos, here are some additional URLs on your site you can create for this reading plan. And you may get some organic traffic to it from Google, one of them, but really these other ones are created so you can have new URLs for Pinterest pins. So you can create, you know, you, you can only on Pinterest, you should only put one pin a day to the same URL. So if you have multiple pages on your site that lead to this content, you could literally create pins for all of those URLs and put them on every day. I mean, I don't recommend doing it every day, but at least every week create new pens to go out to these things. And that's going to increase the amount of traffic going to each one, including the landing page itself. So back to this right here, it says create two different pages. And I'm using example titles, but the first one, topical reading plans for the whole year, and then free monthly Bible reading plans for beginners. So let me show you what those look like. So here's the first one. This one's written more like a blog post. It actually was written with SEO in mind. This is one of my top, probably five traffic um, pages on my entire website. I get so much traffic from Pinterest specifically, but I also get organic traffic from search engine, from Google and other places. But what it, what it does is down here, it's long because to get Google to rank it, you got to have extra content. So here are, so for the whole year, but when they click on these, so like June, it's going to go to the page called the June Bible reading plan. So these are the two pages. The first one, which is, well, it linked over to it. And <laughs> the one I just had you on with the individual bullet points. So that's like your roundup of all your reading plans for the whole year. So that's a URL that could get traffic from Google, but more importantly, it's going to get a ton of traffic from Pinterest. Here's what one of those looks like. So best Bible study plans for beginners. You see, I mean, click throughs, pins, this, get, this is just one pin. Actually, I make this template and just change the background colors and the font. And I mean, I just make this pin over and over and put it to different boards. So you want pins going to that page, but then you want pins going to the actual monthly page. And so this is what this is. I just have like a short prayer, you know, a short mini devotional about the topic. And then they can download the thing. There's a few questions on here. Again, you, you want to put content on here. This is what I send out at the beginning of every month. So I send out a new reading plan for the month. This is the page that they get. And then down here is the mock-up for the, the month. And when they click this, it actually takes them to the Gumroad link. So the Roundup post, the original 12 monthly plans, that goes to the individual pages. And once they come to this page, it links to Gumroad. Now, why would I link it to Gumroad and not give them a direct link? Because I do have a premium version. And so when they go to check out, even though it's free, it offers them, hey, do you want to dive deeper and here's the full study and save 30%. I mean, my, my stuff is only like $4.99 anyway, so they get 30% off of that. And so that's why I put the link 
the Gumroad link in here instead of a direct download link. And so that upsell is, and, and the upsell works, um, that I get quite a few sales from it every month. So that's what it looks like. So you have the roundup page and then you have this page. And then of course you also have the Bible study landing page. And so in addition to the, for mine, 11 blog posts, the roundup plus the 10 link to's, you also have three additional pages, but actually there's one more that I create. It is literally, well, I don't like that it has pinned on it, but it has, um, it's just a list. There's no real SEO value. This is like, hey, here's a list of all my reading plans. And the reason I created this, I know it's not going to get organic traffic because there's no content, but this gives me an additional URL that I can create pins for and put on Pinterest. And so I have an additional stream of traffic coming to my website for these Bible reading plans. And so again, you can make multiple ones of these and call them something else. You could have one that's called Bible reading plan and another one called scripture writing plans, and they both lead to the same place. These actually go to uh, the Gumroad freebie. Okay. So this is the devotional. Now here's the thing, the devotional so this is the Bible reading plan, both the free and the full version they get. This is what they get when they checked out on Gumroad for the devotional study. They get this page, they get a prayer, and then this. This link is clickable. This QR code goes to the same link. And if you didn't know, you can add these QR codes uh, for free. There's like an app over here in Canva. You can do that. It's real simple. I actually have a tutorial on how to do that. So when they click this, it actually goes to the landing page for the Bible study. This is where I think a lot of people get caught up is, well, this stuff is freely available on my site. Why would I package it and put it on Gumroad? Well, because Gumroad has an, another audience and this is another stream of traffic that you have a potential to gain, especially with, through Gumroad itself, because it has a discover program where people search for things but then also all the Pinterest pins leading to this. And so you're maximizing the traffic potential, which does what? It maximizes the session and watch hour potential for your blog and your, for your YouTube videos. So again, it comes back to create content, knowing how you're going to continue to repurpose it. You know, when you create one and done content, especially if you're creating just blog posts, you know, we don't know. Google may like you. Google may like you for a while and then decide it doesn't like you and take all your traffic away. So you want to create content that's going to continually feed itself, so to speak. So you have all of the blog posts have the video embedded in them. And in the notes for the video, it you know, so the video is embedded in the blog post, but on the video itself in the description, you put a link to the blog post, but you don't say, here's the blog post. You say, download the free study questions. And, and that's what it says. And then you put the link to the blog post. So they have to go to the blog post to get the study questions, right? And so whether they find you on YouTube, whether they find you on the website itself, um, by the way, you can make pins for both the blog posts and the YouTube videos and put them on Pinterest. You should make pins for all your blog URLs, all your YouTube video URLs, and all of your Gumroad URLs. Make pins for everything. Put them on Pinterest. This way, even if Google never knows your name for these particular pieces of content, Pinterest has you in all kinds of ways, marketed different ways, that can send traffic to them. And so this, this thing that I created that started with just that free reading plan and like you created the reading plan and then you just went off to create your list of SEO keyword blog posts, which I'm not saying don't do. You should have some SEO content on your site. So when Google is nice, you have that going for you, but you should be creating content that feeds itself. This is the repurpose. So starting with that reading plan, I already spent time creating it. What else can I do with it? So now you've seen all the things that you can create with it and literally that could be your content plan. I mean, that's like how many pieces of content? We had 11 minimum for mine because I have 10 idols to discuss. So whatever yours is, and then turn all of that into another piece of content called the devotional Bible study lesson. 
you can lead these in your Facebook group. So I actually just finished this modern idols in my Bible study Facebook group. And it shot up my Facebook referral traffic, like 300% almost um, because of the landing page for them to get the materials every week. Uh, and now that, that it's over, I still get traffic to this page because I have Pinterest pins. I have a whole bunch of Pinterest pins every week. Actually, each week we'd start a new lesson. I just create a new pen and put it on Pinterest. So this is the not one and done it way of creating content. Every piece of content should link to something else that's relevant to keep them staying on your site, to keep them wanting more, but also that is serving them. Don't just create random content, create it with purpose and more importantly, create it with repurpose. This will save you so much time, so much stress on like, what do I write about this week? What video should I, should I make? Tie it all back to your Bible reading plan. So ideally, if you create, you know, 12 ideas for the year, there's your content for the year. Like the amount of time it takes to create, you know, the link, the roundup post plus the ones, you know, you can go less than 10. If you don't have a lot of time, you could go four, you could go five on your list. I just go 10 because I mean, this is what I do all day, but instead of having to do the whole keyword stuff, just focus on this and combine it with Pinterest. And of course, share it on Facebook and other places. There's other ways you should be promoting this. Also, once you've packaged the study into this landing page, you can put this as a permanent link in your weekly email. So link to it in your, you know, when you send out your welcome email or email series, one of those could be like, hey, here are some free Bible studies that, you know, you might want to check out, If especially if you're a Bible study blogger. And your ministry's purpose is to help people grow stronger in their knowledge of the word. Here's some free resources. And that's content that you're going to click. So that's your welcome email series. But then put it as a permanent section in your weekly emails that says, hey, free resources. I have a section for that on mine. Every single week that section gets clicks because I have new people joining the list. Or maybe they didn't open the last email or whatever. So there are so many ways that you can continue getting traffic to these beyond when you're actually leading the study in your group, if you're doing that. So anyway, uh, I will link that um, PDF document, the blueprint down in the notes below, as well as uh, the Gumroad tutorial. Um, so if you have any questions at all, I would love to hear about it. Drop a comment below or even better, hop over to my Facebook group uh, where you can ask questions and get more support. So I would love to hear your feedback. Let me know what you think. And if you're already doing this, how is it working out for you? And I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.